director will come to me either with, and not just a director, sometimes a writer, but we're very director driven and we work with a lot of writer directors. They'll come to me either with an idea or a piece of material, a, a book or an article that they want to adapt. Uh, or a first draft of a screenplay, or a synopsis. And usually we work with that director or that writer in a way that is organic to him or her. You know, so um, Todd, for example, he really likes uh, a lot of collaboration, a lot of comments as he's writing. It, um, it helps him, it helps him th you know, think more clearly about what he's doing. Some writer-directors I work with basically hand me a script that's virtually finished and aren't interested in any real comments. Uh, you know, that's uh, when Todd Solons did Happiness, uh, he gave the script to Ted, to Ted Hope and I, and Ted wrote like four pages of notes, and you know, we sat down with Todd and he was like, okay, so first of all, in the first, and Todd was just like, I don't wanna see them, <laughs> you know, and that was it. For me, the best kind of producer-director relationship is basically just one where there's a tremendous amount of trust uh, and where ultimately the director feels absolute confidence that I am working to get his or her vision as effectively on screen as I possibly can. Now, that doesn't mean we always agree. We often don't. But it does mean that um, that there's no sense that I'm shortchanging something in the film out of an, an ulterior motive. So Todd Solon said to the financier when we were all sitting there in a meeting, he said, how much money will you give me to make the movie and let me cast who I want? And the financier said, two million. So we had to cut our budget by more than half, okay, so that we could go into production right away. Todd was, much happier though, because he didn't want to have to cast off a list. He wanted to cast who he wanted. And that's the, that's the tension. When Todd Haynes made I'm Not There, he knew that if he was going to make a movie that out there and that experimental, that he better get an A-list cast. And he did. See, I, I'm a commercial producer. I know I make a lot of art films, but the art films I make return on their investment. They really do. You know, for the most part, every now and then we'll make one that doesn't. But when that happens, that's terrible for all of us. We try to make our movies for the right budget, with the right cast, uh, so, that, so that they can make money, so that I can turn around and make another one. I feel more and more independent film is all about being a true alternative. It's more important now than it ever was to, be, to, to truly have an original voice. I don't really care if a director, you know, hasn't been on a film set before. You know, that matters less to me because that's something I can sur surround them with people who have. What matters to me is that they can say what's up here so we can get up there. You know, one of the hardest things, and uh, you know, maybe some of you have experienced this, is being on, a, on set with a director who doesn't know what he or she wants. We call it, my indecision is final. And, um, and it's really, I really want to make sure that I'm getting, you know, that when I'm getting into business with a director, that I'm not going to find myself, however many months later, on the set going, oh shit. When I was growing up, television wasn't supposed to be smart. Movies were supposed to be smart, and television was where you went to relax, to, you know, have a beer at the end of the day and watch something kind of stupid, like The Partridge Family or The Brady Bunch or something like that. I think what's happened is now people are starting to look at television as a place where they can be challenged a little bit more, particularly HBO, but not only. I mean, now people will accept on a small screen uh, characters that they don't like, ambiguous endings, um, you know, uh, anti-heroes, things that when you try to uh, convince a financier to finance them in the, in, in the cinema, uh, they're just, they're, you know, they're, they're far more reluctant. At the same time, you know, 
uh, cinema, at least in the States, is undergoing some pretty extreme changes. Most notably, I think, uh, you know, the, how, how, how you judge a film's success. I mean, the, you know, we're in a little bit of a crisis in terms of distribution um, and how movies are able to recoup their, you know, their, their budgets back. Because of that, I think there's a lot more sense of like, first time directors are too scary, actors who don't have big track records, all of those things, whereas TV keeps on, you know, being able to be a place where people can experiment a little bit more. I also think there's a new generation of filmmakers who grew up with really great television, who grew up with shows like The Wire and Six Feet Under and The Sopranos, and they don't think about TV as stupid anymore. You know, to them, that's where they got to see real character development and real stories. So naturally, it's something they want to keep doing as they come into their own. The way we're consuming media is, is, is so drastically different than it was 20 years ago that making those distinctions between film, television, internet is becoming harder and harder to do. I mean, you know, there's still the people who say, my movie was meant to be seen in the cinema and that's how I want it seen. But the problem is, is that, you know, there's a lot of people watching Lawrence of Arabia on an iPod. There just is. And until we have, you know, a cinema police that goes around and says, you know, are you watching Goodfellas on a screen this big? You know, you're under arrest. Like, you know, it's just the way it is. Look, I feel like I have survived as a producer because I'm not, I'm not nostalgic for the way things used to be. I had the great privilege of working with Robert Altman on his second to last film, The Company. And uh, that movie was like a seven or eight million dollar film. Um, it was his film after Gosford Park. Uh, and he wanted to make a million dollars on it. So I was doing the numbers and I was like, you know, I, 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 I don't know how we can make the movie that you want to make and still, you know, and you could still make a million bucks. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I was like, you know what? We don't, if we don't shoot it on film, because this was still a pretty new thing, this idea of shooting on HD. So if we don't shoot it on film, actually we could probably get pretty close. He's like, fine, we won't shoot it on film. <laughs> and, um, and Altman embraced that camera. It was so inspiring to me. You know, he was 75, actually I think he was older than that. Uh, but he was at least 75. And he was just like, the, the, he was like, you know, absolutely no attachment to how he'd ever shot his films before. He was like, this is fantastic. It's fantastic for the actors. I don't have to light as much, etc." Our films tend to be financed uh, in, there's three, three ways. And usually the, my movies are financed by two, if not all three of the ways. There's foreign sales, uh, equity financing, and North American distribution. Okay, you can't just send me a script though, okay? <laughs> you guys realize that, okay? Uh, usually what happens, we don't take unsolicited material anymore. Um, we used to. And that would mean that every time I came and spoke somewhere like this, I would go to my office, you know, I'd fly back to New York and I'd come to my office and they'd be like, what did you do? <laughs> what did you say to them? And there'd be like a stack of FedExes from Zurich by the door. What you should try and do is get to the people who are at your level, at either at my company or at, you know, any company, whether it's, you know, the Weinstein Co., Sony, wherever, because those, you should reach out to your peers. Every agency, for example, has somebody working there who's, who's supposed to be looking out for you, you know? Make sure that if you're writing some fantastic screenplay or you made a terrific short film, that it's not gonna pass them by. I mean, the fact is, I hate to read scripts. I hate it more than anything. I will, I get a lot of work done, a lot of other work done, when I have a script I have to read, because I will think of anything else to do than read that script, because there's so many bad ones, and it's such a drag 
to, to read a bad script. It's just like you feel like you'll never get that hour of your life back again, you know? When you send a script out professionally, don't give me a script that's over 110 pages, okay? Because that shows me that you haven't, that you're not thinking realistically, that you haven't edited your own work yet. I don't want to read a 125 page script and don't tell me that, oh, well, but some films just need to be longer. No, they don't, you know? So don't, pr proofread your script, spell check it. If I start reading something and it's filled with errors, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop. I'm just gonna feel like, again, you did not take the time to submit something that was as professional as it could possibly be. You know, those are my two big tips.